So much of what we call innovation in gardening is nothing more than rediscovering what our ancestors already knew. While compost is praised today as the gold standard for feeding soil, there was once another method, older, simpler and far more controversial, that farmers relied on for centuries. It was a practice so effective at reviving exhausted earth that it spread across continents. Yet in the last hundred years, it was quietly abandoned, restricted, and in some cases outright banned. Why? Because this soil revival trick used fire and ash, the one element that frightened regulators in modern agriculture. The irony is that while compost is celebrated, this ash-based method outpaces it in speed and mineral richness. And if gardeners today understood how to adapt it safely, they could bring life back to even the deadest soil faster than most compost piles can keep up. Our forefathers understood the power of fire to feed soil. Long before chemical fertilizers and lab-made boosters, farmers worked with what they had, wood, brush, crop residues, and animal manures. When fields became tired and yields shrank, one of the most common practices was controlled burning. From medieval European slash-and-char techniques to African and Amazonian fire-based soil amendments, farmers recognized that ash from organic matter carried an unmatched burst of minerals. Potassium, calcium, magnesium, and trace elements were released in instantly available forms, while the heat itself sterilized soil of certain pests and pathogens. But this wasn't reckless burning. In most traditions, it was a managed cycle. Fields were cleared, residues burned into ash, and the blackened ground planted immediately with grains or vegetables that thrived on the nutrient surge. The Vikings used it on barley fields, Japanese rice growers on paddies, and settlers across North America on new farmland. They had no bags of fertilizer, no soil test kits, but they understood a simple truth. Ash feeds soil fast. The problem wasn't with ash itself, but honestly with abuse. When fire was used carelessly, entire landscapes were stripped bare, leading to erosion and, uh, permanent soil loss. Colonial slash and burn in tropical regions destroyed ecosystems and gave the practice a bad name. Later on, with the rise of industrial farming and the fear of nutrient leaching, agricultural boards discouraged or even outright banned the use of ash in fields. Instead, compost was promoted as the safer, slower, and more balanced option. Compost really does work. It builds humus, feeds microbes, and steadily improves soil texture. But, you know, it's slow to break down, requires a careful carbon-to-nitrogen balance, and demands patience that, honestly, many gardeners just don't have. Ash, on the other hand, works in weeks, sometimes even days, that speed is why authorities feared it. Too much ash, too fast, and soil pH spikes, microbes die off, and crops just burn. It was honestly easier for regulators to label it dangerous than to teach the careful balance our forefathers already practiced. The reason ash can outgrow compost lies in its chemistry. Compost feeds soil life, which in turn slowly releases nutrients. Ash, though, skips that process. Its minerals are already broken down by fire, meaning plants can take them up immediately. For potassium-hungry crops like tomatoes, potatoes, and fruit trees, this makes a dramatic difference. You see, these plants thrive when they get a good dose of potassium, and it really shows in their growth and yield. Another overlooked advantage is that ash adds calcium carbonate, which sweetens acidic soils. In regions where soils are naturally sour, a handful of wood ash spread across beds acts like a free lime treatment, balancing pH and unlocking nutrients that compost alone cannot. It's quite a remarkable transformation, really. This is why European farmers in medieval times prized ash not just as fertilizer, but as a soil corrector. They understood the value of balancing their soil, something we can still learn from today. You know, compost is great for adding organic matter to your soil, but here's the thing, without the mineral kick of ash, it just can't correct soil chemistry quite as quickly. 
So the modern gardener can totally revive this age-old practice, but it's important not to repeat the mistakes of the past. The first step, really, is to know your soil. Now, if you're dealing with already alkaline soil, heavy ash applications will actually harm rather than help. But, if your soil tends to be on the acidic side, wood ash becomes an unmatched ally. Just remember, unlike compost, ash must be applied sparingly. No more than a thin dusting across your beds or a single cup per square yard worked gently into the topsoil. Timing is everything. Our forefathers knew to apply ash in autumn or early spring, giving rains time to wash nutrients into the soil before planting. Mixing ash directly into planting holes can burn young roots, which is where so many gardeners fail. The right way is patience. Spread it, let it settle, then plant into enriched soil weeks later. Combining ash with compost is even better. Compost supplies carbon and microbial life, while ash provides minerals and pH balance. Together they create soil richer than either could alone. If we look at history closely, we see how central this method was to survival. In Scandinavia, where soils were thin and cold, farmers routinely burned brushwood and straw, spreading ash across rye fields to coax out harvests from marginal land. In Japan, villagers mixed rice hull ash with composted fish scraps, producing black, fertile beds that could support rice for generations. And in colonial America, settlers who cleared forest plots spread ash before planting maize, achieving bumper harvests without chemical inputs. The most striking example is Amazonian terra preta, or dark earth. Indigenous farmers blended charcoal, ash, bone, and organic waste into the forest floor, creating soils so fertile they remain productive centuries later. Modern science has tried to replicate it, yet the principle remains the same. Fire-altered minerals, when balanced with organic matter, can transform dead soil into a living engine of fertility. For the serious prepper or self-reliant gardener, compost alone may not be enough. Compost takes time, space, and steady inputs of green and brown material. In a crisis or survival scenario, speed matters. Ash provides that speed. A single fireplace or wood stove can produce enough ash in a winter to revitalize an entire garden bed. In regions with limited access to fertilizers, this means independence. Of course, knowledge is key, too much ash kills soil life, but controlled application learned from our ancestors is a skill worth relearning. Compost builds the soil foundation, ash delivers the mineral spark, and together they ensure resilience. For preppers, that combination is more valuable than any store-bought amendment. It is telling that this method had to be banned from modern agriculture to take full control. Compost was promoted, chemicals followed, and ash was left behind as a relic. Yet the earth remembers, the soils of Scandinavia, Japan, and the Amazon still bear witness to its power. Gardeners who rediscover this balance are not breaking rules but stepping back into the flow of human history, where survival depended on ingenuity, not products on a shelf. If there is one lesson here, it is that fire, when respected, is as much a soil builder as water or compost. Our ancestors understood that revival sometimes came not from adding more waste but from transforming it. They knew the difference between reckless burning and careful ash application. They left us a blueprint for fertility that we have ignored for a century, yet it still works as well today as it did then. The banned soil revival trick of our forefathers was simple. Use ash with respect, balance it with organic matter, and let the soil rest before planting. It still outgrows compost when applied correctly because it delivers what compost cannot, an instant mineral-rich spark of life. If you found this deep dive into forgotten soil wisdom valuable, subscribe to Hydrohaven for more guides that dig into both history and science to unlock better gardening today.
Share this with fellow gardeners who rely on compost alone because the old ways were banned, not because they failed, but because they worked too well.